Welcome back to Contextual Electronics. Today's video is about the role of netlists, specifically in getting from your schematic and the information contained within it over to your layout. And this is done not only with the CVPCB tool that we'll talk that is talked about in another video, uh, but also with netlists. And so we're going to actually show how that flow goes and where they come from and actually what a netlist looks like. So let's open up the launcher, and we see that we're using the same radio board project that's uh, partially completed and was talked about in the CVPCB intro video. But let's start actually in the schematic editor. And then we look up here, we see there is a generate netlist command. So we've already done this once before, but this is all the netlist that we are, are capable of exporting from the schematic. Uh, Spice, ORCAD PCB, and CAD Star. These are these two are other um, layout programs. Spice is just for generic Spice output format. We are actually going to use the PCB New because that is the KiCad based uh, output format. So we're going to use the advanced format and a default, and we just generate netlist. We save it, and actually we can generate a second netlist, and that'll that'll be interesting because it'll show a different side of the association tool. So that's all we really have to do here. Uh, this is the end. Of, so th this is at a point where we say the schematic's done enough, we'd like to move it into layout uh, for this revision of the of the board. So now we go over to the CVPCB tool because this is in the section of hooking up the uh, between the schematic and layout. And we see uh, this has actually got the older uh, the older footprints and everything loaded in here because this is using the other original netlist. So instead let's open up the radio board 2 netlist. Oh. oh yeah, this is normal if you're opening a new file. <laughs> these uh, these error messages come up this is because it's just a uh, uh it's just part of the program how KiCad works, but every time I kind of <gasps> get a little scared. Ah, an error. <laughs> so we see some of this stuff actually got back annotated. Um so the netlist actually already had information in here about what what uh, footprint we were using and everything. But we do see now there are some footprints that are not associated with the schematic symbol. And so we could we could associate those now. Once we actually save this, uh, that'll take us over to the, uh, the, the layout tool and we can actually pull up that information now that it's associated. Instead though, let's actually look at a netlist itself. So we'll just open up a generic text editor, and then we have to find this file. Uh, let's see, looking in my directory here. I think I found it. Yes. Sorry about this, looking for the actual file here. There it is. So we drop in the radioboard2.net and we see that this is actually it's just a it's just a text file and so what that selection was before when we we could see the different exporting to different files and different uh, different programs that actually would just be changing it would take the base information in EE schema or the schematic program and it would just output it into different form differently formatted text files so in this case we have uh, this is this is for the PCB new, which is the KiCad format, and it's obvious that it uses parentheses to actually notate different things within it. Um, we can see that just for a single component here, these two uh, encapsulate the component, and then the reference is listed here, and everything else all the way down. Um, you can see the part types. So, uh, but basically, netlists just act as a generic format to move between. Uh, between different programs and and different parts of KiCad in this case, so what's interesting about that is that because this isn't a uh, encoded or a machine readable file, like a, a bit file might be, um, we can actually go in and hack at this if we really needed to. So, say we only received a netlist from a friend, right, who had generated a schematic. Well, all he sends us to the netlist. And we need to change uh, reference Q1 from an NPN to a PNP. 
we could actually go in and actually edit these things manually and save it. And now this isn't something I would suggest for uh, if you if you're actually you know starting with with the schematic if it's your design I would not suggest doing this but it's interesting because this is actually a visible format and it's it's very readable it's very easy to change if we needed to it's also nice if you're kind of tearing your hair out during a board uh, layout or if you're troubleshooting you you don't understand why you know two pins that you thought were hooked together why they're not actually showing up as being hooked together well you can come into the into the net list and see okay are they actually hooked together here and if they are, then you're in good shape. All right, so this is the uh, version of a netlist. Um, we can see there's different components of it here. Sorry, there's different sections of it. This is the components side of things, just lift, listing the components itself. Further down, it actually connects uh, uh, how it actually is connected together because you need to know pin 2 of component R1 is hooked up to pin 1 of component C15, you know, something like that. Um, so we can see there are different different types of uh, different sections within the netlist, and that is going to vary from program to program. So once that's created uh, from the schematic program, as we saw here, we push in the CVPCB program that actually does the association, and then we can actually, once we have associated between a you know a connector and a pin, or a, a resistor and a, an actual surface mount part we can actually go and put it into the, the layout program and start making the physical connections or what will become the physical connect connections when you get your board fabbed so uh, net lists are very important they're a great tool to use if you're in a bind if you need to check out kind of do a sanity check to make sure everything is hooked up as you think it is hooked up in the schematic and it's uh, very useful for you know if you want to write your own scripts or programs at some other time you can actually go through and you know modify them uh, from that standpoint. If you if you wanted to add extra functionality to your program, you don't necessarily need to work through KiCad and everything else. You could just, you know, create your own uh, netlist modifier based on, you know, a st the standard that you you see in the netlist. All right, thanks for watching.